Alrighty, hello again everyone. Today I am back with a little plugin I found last night just playing around and looking at stuff on YouTube. And this plugin is for Greebles. Now, if you don't know what a Greeble is, and neither do I, let's click on Oh, well, I know what it is now, but I didn't back then. Let's go to Wikipedia and let's type in Greeble. What it really is, is it's adding small details to something. Find detailing if you ever saw that yes, right there. Find detailing, adding to the surface of larger objects, make it appear more complex. So what it does is this would be your beginning cube, and you would just add a Greeble modifier to it to make it look much more complex. So this is very useful for creating cityscapes, more complex building tops, more complex death stars, kind of cool bacterial growth, stuff like that. Very useful. Uh, I played around with it, and there is a modifier for it that's very useful. So, let's go to the website. It's right here. I'll link it in the description, because that's what I just do. And download whichever one you use. Like, R3, man, I haven't used R3 in a long time. I think I started with R7 and 8. But anyways, I use 2012, so I download. Just click on the box. Um, it'll give you the 32 and 64 bit of the program. So, once you get this, this is different than the script. You actually have to put in the right proper area. So just click on it to download it and then unzip the file and then go to your plugins location. So usually it's under C, Program Files, Autodesk, and then Max 20, whatever, 3ds Max. And make sure it's this plugin. It's not with the, this is not the right plugins folder, the one with the dash. You want to make sure it's not the one with the dash. And then, excuse me, and then dry, drop it into here. It should be a DLM file. Make sure that if you are using 64-bit, you use a 64-bit, and it's right there, just 64. The 32 will have 32 there. And if you have 32-bit Autodesk 3S Max, make sure you're under Program Files 86. And that will be under there. I don't have 32-bit, so it won't show up for me. And once you put that in, make sure the plugin is in here, and start up 3S Max. Make sure when you're copying everything over, 3S Max is not installed. I just already have it installed, so... Or 3S Max. Make sure when you're copying it over 3ds Max, Max is not open. I already have the plugin installed, so Max is open. Next, what you want to do is make sure the plugin is loaded. So, we'll go under Customize and Plugin Manager. This window is different in older versions. I think this is new with 2010? Anyways, so just go down, search for Greeble. Right there. Right, right there. Sci-Fi Greeble Library, loaded. If it's not loaded, you'll just have to right-click and go load new plugin, and then, you know, you just, or, sorry, select the plugins and load it. But it's already loaded. It autom should automatically load if you put it under that uh, folder I showed you. And other than that, yeah, it should be loaded. If not, just right-click, select plugins, load, and then restart max, and it should be fine. So this one, we're just going to go over how to create, like, a small building scape, a huge cityscape. Oh! Oh, that was just my microphone. No, that's not good. My bad. I apologize. One second. All right. There we go. Just get comfortable. And this will be a small cityscape, a large cityscape, and a building top. So first, what we're just going to do is building top. To use a Greeble modifier, usually you do is you create a base object. So you create a box or something. Let's just go through this quickly. And on your modifier list, we'll go to Greeble, press Enter. And there you have a Greeble modifier. You can see stuff on it. So, without the Greeble modifier, nothing. Just a plain old box with the Greeble modifier. It has a whole bunch of little stuff to it. It breaks it up. You can uh, see the little plaques. And then these little widgets, what they call it. So first, we want to just generate quadrilaterals and triangles. And really, I generate from quadrilaterals because you have four boxes there. If we triangulate this first... I can't remember it's tape. I can't remember what the one triangulates it's called. Because I rarely use triangles. But anyways, if you had triangles in here, we will do that actually really quickly. Just to show you what it's like. Poly. You don't have to do this. This is just to demonstrate it developing from triangles and from Greeble. Greeble. See, as you say, now we're not to going from triangles, but you see the top of made triangles, and you can see kind of cool look to it with the triangles and quadrilaterals as well. Yeah, I like those triangles. Now, first, first I just want to double from quadrilaterals just to make it 
anything four sided. This will not work, I'm assuming now, with anything over four sides. So I'm just going to make sure I'm test I out properly. So the cylinder, you can see we have 18 sides of this polygon. Add a Griebel modifier to it. No, see, it will not work with anything over four sides. So that's one thing to take into account. This needs four sides or three sides to work. And you can change your C to get a different style of uh, a different style of quadrilateral. This is just a random number that you can generate from. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I think it was. No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 was the base one. And that looks good enough to me. Now, first what you're going to see is I'm going to turn off widgets and you're seeing panels. These things are these larger pieces. As you see, there are these panels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and usually it does max four per side. So it'll do two. It'll cut at least up into two, four pieces. It will not do any higher than that. It'll not go any lower than that. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three, two, and three. Now, right here we have the minimum max height. So the minimum height is how tall these things have to be. As you can see, the panels are getting smaller and larger as I increase the min height. Max height is how big can they be? Again, changing size. Uh, there's a taper on it, so you can taper it in, make it a nice little beveled curve, or have no taper. And both are useful for some things. And materials, this gives you a material ID for it, so if you want a material ID. And you can keep the original geometry, and as you see, if we didn't keep the original geometry, it wouldn't be there. But if we keep it, it stays there. Uh, since we are going to have these things on set, we don't need to keep the original geometry. We select the tops of it, which selects these pieces. But it doesn't always work, and I don't know why, personally. And we can select the size of it, which are these sides right here. I'm pretty sure you need a mesh selector to use those things properly. So I just keep all this off. Next is what we call the widgets. And widgets are these smaller pieces that add even more detail. So there's two levels of details. There's the main panels that these things are, and then there are the widgets, which are on top. Now again, the there's different types of widgets, so as you can see, I'm going to click them all off to show you what they are. Right now, these are just basic square widgets, these square thingies. Next are two widgets, one to get one after the other, so they're kind of pieced together like that. Uh, next are three widgets in a row, one, two, three, three, three. Next widgets are the L-shaped widgets, and you can see all those weird little L shapes. And the next ones are the T's, so they're just kind of T-shaped widgets. Now you can kind of say, oh, I want maybe a T-shaped and an L-shaped together, or a 3 and a T-shaped and an L-shaped. And really, I usually like keeping them all on. They can make some cool looking shapes. And again, min and max size just increases and decreases the max sizes. Min and max sizes, and then you can increase and decrease the height, as well as the density. So this just adds more and more onto it. So you can just go like that, which looks kind of funky. Now, it's not the cleanest way of doing stuff, for sure. However, can get you a good quick result and if it's only for like a background of a look out at a cityscape or something it looks just fine so this was probably I think this was used in Blade Runner and I think ILM also used it in what was it Star Wars I think Star Wars for the uh, kind of look of the I don't even know what that thing that Luke went down was called anymore the shaft that Luke was flying down in the Star Wars The New Hope so let's go create a building with some cool top pieces. So we'll just delete you out and we will first create a box. So really right now I would be usually worrying about my length and width and height parameters but since it's just a quick little demonstration of how to use a Griebel modifier and this plugin I won't really worry too much about it. So we'll do 15 by 15 and about 30 high. So there we go, kind of a square building. Next thing we need to do is if you see we add the Griebel modifier to it. It adds it everywhere, but we only want it on the roof. So what we're going to do is between these, we're going to add a mesh select. So mesh select, it should be at the, near the top of the list. Actually, it's the first one. And we'll drop that between the Griebel and the mesh select. We'll select polygons, select the top polygon, and then go back to Griebel and turn it on. Now you can see it is only doing stuff to the top polygons. Next thing we'll do is we don't want these panels. They look kind of weird. So we don't really want to generate the panels. But since we're not generating panels, you can see you can see through this now. So what we want to do is keep the original geometry. 
and there you go. And now see that works for the widgets. I've never understood how and why, but it doesn't work that one. But now, this just looks kind of boring, right? Sure, it looks like a uh, cityscape and a bit more new to it, but I kind of want it a bit bigger. And I kind of want it a bit higher. But it seems, again, too little. So let's put a density up there. And there we go. Kind of little top to our building, maybe not that high. Or what we could do is make it smaller. There we go. We can decrease the minimum density to about two. Increase the max size, or sorry, minimum size to two. Increase the max size to about 30. And there we go. It's kind of a little top to our building. So, a very simple way to create a top to a building. It's nothing special, but when you're looking at it this far away, or some very far away, it looks like it's good enough. Next, what we're going to do is just add a few modifiers to it. So this top will be kind of like a metal thing and this will just be great just to show you how the materials work so this is material one this is material two so use the m to open up the material editor and i will use see there's no material added to it so first what we're going to do is create a new and wow i don't have all right so that is my problem first what we're going to do is going to render render sap and turn on the metal ray rendering system. And there we go. So we'll go back here and we'll add in a metal ray architecture and design material. And this is just going to be one's going to be gray and one's going to be black. Let's darken it up a bit. So these are the two submaterials we have. So now what we're going to do is add a multi and submaterial object and we only want two materials, one and two. So this one goes piped into the first slot and this goes piped into the second slot. And really what all we should see is the everything being black. Yeah, I just saw that coming. But you can see the panel is material one. If we switch over to material two, it should be dark. Oh actually it won't because yeah. We didn't have that original geometry. If we generated them, they'll be black, but the geometry isn't. So, as you can see, the Greeble will make these things black as well. To quickly, uh, quickly make sure that we can switch these back to the right color, we just add another mesh select modifier. And literally, that's quite strange. Leave that out. I'm going to go back to the box. Press hold yes. Yep. So it's for some reason half the side is gray and half the side is black. But that's not the point of that. The point is you can now see that the panels out are, this is the material ID one, which pipes into this channel right here, the first channel of the material submaterial. And these are material ID two, which pipes into the second material. This will allow you to have like metal pieces on the end of a non-metallic edge or something, or maybe the glass pieces on the end of a graven edge. So that's what that looks for. But, however, what I do like is the flat architecture and design material. This one, special effects, ambient occlusion at eh, 64 samples, max distance, yeah, four. And since there's going to be no other materials, we don't really need to turn this on. So we just drag and drop that onto it. And as you can see, there it is. So, that is about the, that is the top of the building that looks a bit more interesting because of the Greeble modifier. Now, what we're going to do is next work on a, I'm just going to hide this selection, work on a cityscape. This is a bit different. This is just going to be a smaller cityscape, so maybe like eight or ten buildings. And this is what we'll use the panels for. So it won't be as detailed because of the tops. We'll show you, I can show you kind of how the tops would work, but this will be more detailed because of, or just big uh, big building closer to you. So what we'll do is add a plane and we'll just move it into right there. And, okay, 300 by 300. Again, not really worrying about my length and my width. Sometimes it's necessary to worry about it, right now it's not. So convert the plane to an edible poly by right clicking it and bringing up the menu. Convert to edible poly. 
and I was dumb, so I'll just undo that for a bit. There we go. I want only one width segment and one length segment. At 300, by 300, and then we'll just zero it out by right-clicking these three sliders down here, and convert to edible poly. So I'll select edge, ring, connect it, and connect it twice. This will be a bit bigger of a city. So the, these I'm just making for streets. Okay, these two, and move them down to about there. Next, what we need to do is again do the mesh select. So we select the things we want to create our greebles on. So we want one there, one there, one there, and one there. These are going to be roads, so we don't really want to start there. Add a greeble modifier, and we just want the panels. So deselect the widgets. We want to be able to make higher panels. So these are more high, taller buildings. And uh, min height, well, max height 10. Okay, maybe not the min height that. So, min height 50, max height 150. Yeah, a bit higher. 150 and 300. And there we go. We have a few taller buildings in there. Now, this isn't very, uh, it's not very detailed. And if we add widgets to it, you can see we add widgets just to the top. But, Maybe what we want to do, even if we add more density, it just doesn't look right. So maybe what we want to do is maybe add more panels to the tops of these. So we will go select tops, and then add another group of modifier. This allows us to have two levels of modification. And now we can add more panels to it. So we will, this will be another 150. So we can, uh, maybe 50 and 100. So, as you can see, there's another level of height to it. And we'll generate some widgets on top of these, which will give us a few nice-looking taller buildings. And we can just do minimum size, leave the minimum size, max height, maybe go up to 15. And a bit more dense. As you see, we kind of have buildings. It's more of a futuristic look of buildings. And there we go. But, as you can see, we have buildings with some stuff at the top of it. And some really low roads down here. So nothing too uh, different. We just have a little poly, and it's very simple how to make this. We start with just a flat plane. I'm going to show you F4 to turn on the wireframe so you can see what we started out with. Turn on mesh select, just select where we wanted to build from. Turn on the, Griebel, the first Griebel system, which just gave us a bit of a base of our buildings. And then we select the tops of it by using the select tops modifier. We added another Griebel system. And as you see, we added a bit more detail to it. And I really don't like the taper that's going on here. So what we're going to do, go to our first Griebel system and have no taper. Our second Griebel system will have a bit more taper. And there we go. Kind of have taper tops to all our buildings. And they really don't like that taper. So we'll just turn off the taper. That's much better. So there we go. We just have kind of taper tops to our buildings. No taper tops to our buildings. And that's how to create just a few buildings with a bit more of a detailed top. Next what we'll do is hide the selection just so we can start up again. And then I'll just unhide them all. Just create a plane. And this will be our large cityscape. So we'll just create a plane again, 300 by 300. Size doesn't really matter right now. And zero it out. Pressing W for the move tool and zeroing it all out. Next what we'll do is create the roads. So since this will be a bigger cityscape, we'll make a bit smaller roads. And we'll make more of them. So we'll make with three roads. And chamfer them so we just get a very slight small movement. And a bit bigger than that. Maybe about to there. So there we go, we got some small roads. Yeah, no, that's not enough. Let's chamfer them and let's chamfer them to at least a one or a bit. Let's go to 2.5. 2. So we'll chamfer them out to 2.5. Ring these ones now, connect them. And then chamfer these as well. So now we got some roads. This will just be a basis for a city. Next what we do is again add the mesh select. Select all of the edges are all the polygons that we'll have that are kind of blocks to our city. And add the Griebel modifier. 
Now what we don't want is these big panels, they just don't look right. We do want the original geometry, so we'll kind of leave it like that. Next, but what we do want is a lot of these widgets. So we just increase the density up to a lot, and we'll increase, we'll leave some panels on, just much slower. And we'll taper it in just a touch, but we won't really notice. So minimal height is 0 0.2, 0 0.1, max height is 0 0.2. And next, what we'll do is, if we just click away, you can see kind of an outline of what we're looking at. This gives us a bit of uh, block, so it's kind of a different height for each of the blocks, nothing too much though. You know, we don't need to select tops, and we don't need to keep the original geometry, now that we're leaving the panels on there. What we do need is these widgets, so keep all of them on. Just to increase the density a lot. However, you can see, not really looking too good. The problem is, is the maximum in size and the max height. We increase the max height, and it's kind of starting to look just like a skate, not cityscape. However, they're kind of interact, they're kind of intersecting with each other and just becoming one big blob. So what we'll do is the minimum size will keep it five, but the maximum size will drop down to fifteen. And now this gives us a lots of tall, small buildings, which kind of just looks like a cityscape. And the density just doesn't seem like a moth. What we don't want is see these really boring single tall buildings. We don't really want those, so get rid of those. And these triple buildings, nah, or these double buildings, don't really want those either. We just want some cool looking buildings. And maybe these L shape we don't want either. So really we're just going to have triple buildings and these T shaped buildings, and single buildings, because I'm very indecisive. I just asked my girlfriend about that. So we're going to bump the max height to 100, have one triple and T shaped buildings on, and increase the density to 50. And from there on, we just get a nice little kind of looking cityscape. And you know what? L and those things will be on too. So we'll just turn on all the greebles. We can increase the max height to make them really tall, which just looks stupid. And we can increase the density to 150. And there we go. We just have a cityscape. As you can see some very similar buildings because it's just the way the greebles modifier works. However, if we change the panel height, kind of gives it a difference, so min height will be 1, max height will be 10. Kind of gives us a different height to each of the panels. And we'll taper them in more, and you can see that's what it would look like if they were tapered in more. You can see each little individual greeble, but we don't want that, so we'll just not taper them in at all. And there we go. Nice little cityscape very quickly. If you're zoomed out here, it looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to unhide all and see what we learned. See what we built. We built a few buildings with some cool tops. We built a single building with a cool little top. And we built an entire cityscape very, very quickly in less than 10 minutes, less than 5 minutes. So if you're just zoomed out way out here, you can just duplicate the city and you're like, oh look, there's an even bigger city. And a bigger city. And this would look great if you were just looking out of a window of a big building that you were building in your animation. Like you just wanted the city to look out at any building. Yeah, okay, that doesn't look too good because of the uh, materials in the room. Anyway. But you can get my ideas from that. What you could do if you really wanted to is select the tops of these. You can see all the tops are selected. And you can add another Greeble modifier to it. And there we go. And we don't want the panels. But we do want to keep the original geometry. And we will just increase the density of these, so like to, uh, 10. You can start seeing my system start to lag, and I think I might have overdone it right now. Nope. So it's going to start to lag if you start introducing too much. But there you go. You can have even a bit more detail to the tops of your buildings. And very simply. It's, it keeps adding levels and levels of detail. Really, it added in, I don't want to know how many polygons that is, though. But it's just through one modifier. And it looks pretty darn good. Even from a view, like even this close in, it looks all right if you had a nice texture on the sides, which you could get by going select sides. It wouldn't select the sides of the other ones, but you know. It's going to select the sides of every single one of. Oh, God. Okay. I'm going to stop playing with that because that's going to be slow on my computer. And one more click. There we go. So it's going to start slowing down if you have too many, like I did, but very simple. And you start playing around too much. So 
that is how you use Greeples. That is the modifier. I'll link it below in the description. Um, hope you learned how to install it improperly and stuff like that. And hope you enjoyed learning how to use a Greeple modifier system. So, I will see you hopefully next time. Cheers.